So we're going to need three parts to make our goblet. We're going to need what I call the bowl. We're going to need a base, which is flat. And we're going to need the stem. And it will sort of fit together like that. So first of all, we're going to just tidy up the outside. This is um, an axed finish at the moment, so it's pretty rough, but we can just tidy this up with a knife so we know then how much to take out from the center. And I quite like doing the outside first because we can sort of find if there's any flaws in the wood, any splits, any little knots, and we sort of like, we, we discover them with using the knife, make sure the outside is all sound, all secure, and then we can start removing wood from the inside and making those walls really nice and thin. So that's why I like doing it this, this way around. So let's get started with a straight carving knife. This is an end grain goblet. Uh, the fibers are running from one end to the other. So they're running right down the tree like this. So we can carve in either direction when we're doing this part up here, this sort of flat part. And then as we start to work on this curve, then we, we have to go downhill like this, all the way to the base. But where it's pretty flat, so from like around here, we can also go this direction. And because it's end grain also, we can go across the grain. It's not quite as neat a finish, but we can, in fact, go all the way around to tidy everything up. And that's the benefit of end grain goblets. Um, the hard work is done by the drilling and a bit of scooping on the bottom and we can get a really nice finish with the tools. So to start off with we're just going to use the straight knife and we're just going to go around the bowl and we're just going to make it a bit more round, tidy it up a bit on this upper half and then we'll deal with this um, curve here. So that's a lot of the, um, the axe marks removed with the knife. It doesn't take too long. And I'm just spinning it around, trying to make sure it's even as much as I can. And I'll remove a bit if it doesn't look so even. And then what we're going to do, so near the mortise hole of the bowl, we can see that a bit thicker here, thinner here. So what we want to try and do is get some nice, a nice thin rim all the way around there. So about the thickness of this, so a few millimeters thick is more than enough for it to be strong. So I'm just going to remove a bit of the wood here, blend it all in, give it a nice even thin, evenly thin rim. And the way I'll do that is just with the thumb push, so thumb on the back of the blade and just, just pushing and levering. And then just keep checking and just working my way around. It's more like a lever cut than a thumb push this. So like the thumb is 
more or less staying in place and it's just acting as a leverage point for the knife. Now I'm using the thinnest part of the blade for this again because we're going through a tight curve and just keep spinning it. You see I'm really trying to make sure it blends, the bowl blends in to this mortise as much as I can. So you don't want any sharp definition, sharp angles, a nice smooth curve. I find anyway it looks a bit neater. Keep spinning it around. go so you can see we've got this nice fairly even rim on the mortise. Hollowing the inside is mainly straightforward because it's an end grain cup um, we can literally go in a circle so we can literally just go we can go that way we can go that way um, doesn't really matter at this stage when we get towards the bottom um, it's a bit different but if we're doing the walls, we can just go in a circle. We've got our spoon knife, or spoon gouge, and I just like personally holding it into my body, supporting it there. And then we're just going to literally just start shaving away. And we can spin it. That's really satisfying. Get these nice big shavings coming out. So we're just going to carry on going around like this until we get a nice thin wall on our ball. Um, how thin to go? It is up to you. Um, normally I like to go as thin as I dare and you know these things can go really thin with still being strong because they're end grain you know you can go a few millimeters thick on the bowl and it will still be strong enough but you are at risk of putting a hole through um, if you're not too careful so as you get a lot thinner um, I would definitely recommend just stopping and checking more regular you know, one little trick you can also do is just have a torch and you can shine it through the walls of the goblet. And if you see light coming through, then you know you're getting pretty thin and you need to be really careful there. But you get the idea. So you can see I've come across a bit of a knot here. Um, so that could be a problem but it should be fine I think. You never know, it's a natural material after all. It'll be a bit harder to carve because the grain's in a different direction but because a goblet is used with a cool drink the cup shouldn't expand as much as, it, as if it was like a coffee cup where a knot can be more of a problem. But what I normally do if I come across a knot, um, just carve away as best as I can. And then when it dries, what I'll do is just get a bit of really thin super glue, put it on the knot, and it sort of stabilizes it. Um, really helps. Also, this thin super glue is really good if you come across a crack. So if, if you do happen to split your cup for any reason, just some really thin super glue or low viscosity, put it on the little split and it pulls into that crack. It's really good stuff.
and then you just carve the excess glue away and you, you wouldn't even notice it's there. We've done the walls. So I've taken these down to just less than a centimetre, I suppose. Um, when we've done the walls, um, we have to tackle the base, and this is the hard bit. This will be the hardest part of the whole cup. So the base is the end, all the end grains, the end of the fibres. Um, so the tools don't work as well cutting across the fibres like this. Um, so one way I like to try and get around that is I find carving from the middle up out in this direction gives a nice smooth finish like this. Now when carving end grain your tools have to be really sharp like if you try and attempt this with dull tools you're really going to struggle so if you're really really struggling it's probably a sign you need to just get on sharpening your tools um, because we should be getting nice fairly big shavings um, even from the end grain like this that's the bowl done for now um, so I've left the walls just left the, less than a centimeter thick um, because we need to let this dry so let it sit and let it dry and then once it's dried I'll go back over um, the lip again and make this really thin um, I'm not going to do that now because it's going to change shape a little bit and as it dries these fibers are going to compact down and when we go over it again with the tools it's going to leave that really lovely smooth polished finish so there's no point in trying to go too thin just yet so we'll leave it let it dry for a few weeks and then we'll just do the finishing cuts afterwards so while we're waiting for the bowl to dry we can work on the base and when carving the base i like mine round so if you're making it round you need to think about the grain direction so the grain is running this direction so if I'm wanting to carve something like this shape, I've got to think about which direction I'm going to carve. So the grain is running this way. So for this corner here, I need to go this direction up to the halfway point from here go there and turn it around that's because if we went in the opposite direction remember the tool always wants to follow the grain it'll pull into the grain tear off chunks so remember always rem think about the grain direction so once you've got it fairly round then we can work to just thin this edge a little bit you can see how on this one we've got some thinner bits and some thicker bits so what we can do is just try and even this all out a little bit get it all the same thickness around the edge so that's the edge evened up i've left it again probably i don't know bit less than a centimetre all the way around. I haven't taken it too thin at this stage because after it dries we're going to need to make sure the base is flat so that it sits completely flat on the table. So we need to remove a little bit more wood. So if you made this too thin uh, there's a chance that when you come to flatten it you're going to make this um, too weak and it could break. So about a centimetre thickness around the, the edge is, is good for now. Um, so I'm going to leave it like that. Again, I'm going to let this sit there dry with the bowl. And then we can work on the stem. So now it's time to work on stem or the handle. So got a bit of rectangular wood. 
and we need to mark on how much we need to remove from the edges. So there's a few ways you could do that. Um, I quite like to just simply place the base on it like this. Get a pencil, make sure your tip is really sharp so it can get right into the corners and we can just draw around it. Like that. And what we can do also is the same on the other side. Now, the stem is still fresh green wood, so if we were to carve this now to make a really tight fit in the mortar of the base and the bowl, when this dries, it's going to shrink, it's going to change shape a little bit. So by the time it dries and we go to fit this, it's probably not going to be a very tight fit. So what we're going to do just now is we are going to carve this rough so we're going to leave it a little bit oversized and then we'll let it dry let it do its shrinking let it do its changing of shape and then we'll just as it's dry we'll just um, make it a nice and tight fit so simply we're just going to take the knife and we're just going to take off all the edges um, so what I'm going to do is, if this is the diameter we finally want to get it down to, I'm just going to go a few mil around this. Just rough, just give me a little bit of extra. So we're literally just going to be at this stage taking off the corners. Um, and then when it's dry, we'll be doing more of the carving. So that's all three components roughed out. And now they can all sit and dry together. So I normally do this like I do all my other things. I sit them in a plastic or paper carrier bag with the carrier bag open, just to allow for um, the moisture to escape, but restricting it from drying too quickly where it could split. And probably about two weeks. Uh, depends on how dry it is where you're storing them, but Normally two weeks it should be okay. If it's a little bit drier, um, might be less. If it's quite damp or a damp time of year, it might be even more. Um, if you want it to be really, really safe, then you could leave them a month and it should be fine then. So after it's dried, we can then do the final carving. Once your components are completely dry, then what we can do is we can go over it again with the knife. So for the, the bowl, the most important thing is a nice thin lip. If you have a lip that's too thick, it just doesn't really feel very nice at all for drinking. So really, we take our time um, on the lip. This is the most important stage, really the most important part. This is what's going to be in contact with your body. So it wants to be nice and thin. If it's also if it's too thick, um, tend to get dribbles down the cup, and nobody likes a messy drinker. So, I'm just gonna first of all have a look at the top of the bowl, and if it's changed shape at all, um, what I can do is just take the knife and essentially just flatten off uh, the top side of the cup. Or if there's any rough bits like here, um, we can simply. Just go over it. So I'm just going to flatten the top off with this thumb push. Really nice controlled cuts. Just to level off the top if it's a bit wonky. Um, if you're working like this, just be careful um, around because you're working quite close to your legs. So this is why I quite like doing the thumb push. The knife can only travel as far as my thumb allows it. I'm doing very small cuts and the power is going this way, away from my leg. So if the knife comes through the cut, it is not going to hit me. 
So just be aware of that. So once you've got the top leveled, then we can start to thin um, this lip. So there's two ways we can do it, or we can do both. We can use, um, we can go on the inside and we can go on the outside. We can do one or we can do the other. Um, I normally like doing a little bit of both. Um, so get the knife like this. And we can just start taking a bit off the inside. So that's the inside. The way to do it on the outside is thumb push. You can see how thin I'm going here. Again, we're using the thumb push because it's really controlled. Cutting and spinning. And then often what I'll do is a little bit of backwards and forwards. So if it was looked a bit uneven, then I might sort of shape it up a little bit. So then we can go back on the inside and I'm feeling, so I'm carving a bit, feeling it. You can also do this with a hook knife if you like, some people find that better. You can start to see how thin this rim is. So this cup, I haven't let it dry because I'm making a video. Um, so this would be a little bit harder because it's hardened up a little bit for you, but you're going to be getting um, even smoother finishes than this. Um, but what we're aiming towards really, I mean, you can see the thickness of that rim compared to my finger. It's what, a couple of millimeters thick? Perfect. Um, that'll be really nice to drink out of. So we've carved most of it there. And then we're still, if you took a magnifying glass to this edge, it would be square in shape. So there's two sharp edges on the lip here and here. Um, so what we would do next is just round this over a little bit. So again, that thumb push, and we're going to just chamfer the edge a bit. So just taking off a tiny amount. Again, you'll be doing this when it's dried. So it'll be leaving like a really beautiful polished finish. When you're taking a sharp edge off like this, the, yeah, the, the term well, I used before, chamfering, that's, that's the techie name for it. And it just means that it's going to feel nicer on the lip, and it means also that there's no sharp edge for it to fray over time. So that's the outside edge, and I'll do exactly the same on the inside edge. So I like using, again, the tip of the knife, because it goes the curves quicker, or easier, should I say. I'm literally just taking off that, just the sharp edge, really not much else than that.
And that would be it. That would be the bowl done. Um, if you like, if you want to make it even smoother than this, you could go over it again with the tools on the inside. You can use sandpaper. Um, it's completely up to you. I personally don't like to. I like a tooled finish. I like seeing the tool marks. Um, but now would be the time to get it sanded if you wanted to do that. If you want to do a tooled finish, you can do something called burnishing. So burnishing is a really simple practice, but really effective, where you take a hard, smooth thing. This is a bit of uh, deer antler. You can use um, a smooth pebble, a harder piece of wood, um, uh, the pestle from a pestle and mortar, and essentially you just rub it. So you literally just rub it like this with a bit of pressure. And what it does is it just compacts the fibers, it smooths over any unevenness, um, and it makes it look really, really smooth and nice to the touch, and you don't need to use sandpaper. So this is what I do. I'll go over the whole thing, or right around the edge, and I'll use do the inside as well. Um, and it makes it feel really nice and smooth. So that's burnishing. I really like doing that. Let me do that when it's dry. Yeah, and that will be finished. So um, next thing is the other components. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to colour this in so you can see it. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to really see what the sandpaper is doing. So you can see it's removing material here, which means there's, these are the two high spots. There we go, it's removing it here. It's not removing it here, which means that they're lower than these two bits. So we just keep going. There we go, it's getting there. Right, turn it around, do it from the other side. There we go, we can see it starting to, so all this now is flat. We've got where the green pen is, um, still a bit low there, so we'll just keep going. until most of it's gone. It doesn't matter if there's a couple of spots that are lower, really, as long as just most of this is going to be in contact with a flat surface. So like these little spots here might keep going a little bit, but at, that, at this stage it doesn't matter too much. It should be very stable on a table. I would be happy with that personally. Like there's a couple of little low spots there which I could carry on going with, but you get the idea. So now this should be perfectly flat. Um, we can now just chamfer these sharp edges with the knife um, so it feels comfortable in the hand. Just gonna chamfer the edges just so it's nice and comfortable when we're holding it. Remember thinking about the green direction. It's a really satisfying part this, partly because it doesn't take very long. And also um, it really begins to look 
close to completion when you start to do the chamfering. So always get excited at this stage. That's the top side done. Same on the bottom side. And then that will be the base complete. We need to do the stem. So we now, now this is dried and it's all compacted down, it's changed shape a little bit, we can now carve um, the ends or uh, the tenons to fit in the hole, uh, the mortise of the base and the cup. So what I quite like doing is I will just mark um, the bottom with a B for base. And that with a T for top. Because the tenon we're going to carve is going to be specific to the base and to the bowl of the goblet. Um, so we need to know which is which. So now all we're going to do is take it down to our pencil mark. Um, um, but we need to pay attention to um, how much would, do we actually need to carve, you know. Um, so how, how deep is this mortise hole? And we're going to mark it on here. So we can just, just going to put the knife in here to measure the depth. So that's the depth um, of the mortise hole. So what I can do now is transfer that depth onto here. Mark all the way around. So that depth there is what I need to carve to fit the mortise hole of the base. So I don't want to make it too thin all the way up. Ideally, I want to keep it a bit thick above this line so that it is a nice tight fit. So it widens just above this line here. Now it's really important when we're carving this tenon that we don't taper it to a point. We want to keep the walls of this tenon parallel. So if we taper it to a point, what means is it's not going to be in contact with uh, the mortise hole of the base. Same with the bowl. So we need to just be really mindful that we're, we're going to be carving the same amount each time. So we're looking at our circle on the bottom and I'm going to go for my line and I'm just going to do like little flick, flicking cuts like this. And I'm going to keep like a little shoulder there. Take it up to our pencil mark and just a little bit at a time. Really try not to take off too much, otherwise you're not going to get a tight joint. So I'm just taking off a small amount and then I'm keep checking. Looks a bit egg shaped, so I'm going to just take a bit more of there. Then, when we're getting close to what we think might work, we can just try it. You can see, it's not quite there yet, won't quite fit in. So, that's just check where the high points are and just go around again. Now we're going to glue this in place, same with the bowl, and we can use wood glue. I personally like using epoxy resin because it's really, really strong. But 
but you can use whatever you've got at hand. Let's try it again. Nice little spinning action can sometimes show you, see here to show me where it's catching little white bits here. So then we can just take those off. Try it again. So that sound there is a tight fit, but you can see there's quite a gap there. This is as far as it's going, so we're about, I don't know, um, three millimeter from being flush with the base, um, which means it won't be quite as a strong joint. So that suggests it's a bit fatter towards the middle of the handle than towards the end. So we just need to just try and even that up a little bit. So let's pull it back out and see where it went white, where it's been rubbing. So we can just, again, just get that tip in there. Another way of doing it as well is coming down and just taking it out this way. What we're aiming for is a really tight fit, if we can. Now, it doesn't have to look too beautiful as long as it's just really tight, because all of this is going to get hidden. Just cut them fibres like this. Okay, let's try that. That's a lot better. There we go. So now we've got both the mortises made, we can shape the handle a little bit more if we want to. So I'm just going to come down this way, nice and slowly. You don't have to do this, but I quite like a thinner handle. I'm trying not to cut the cup, try not to cut the tenon. Turn it around and we can just come the other way, match it up. If you can get nice long cuts, you're going to have a nice smooth finish.
bit of swapping backwards and forwards here. The direction you're cutting. That's getting nearly there. So, when all of your components are ready, you're happy with them, then what we can do is just assemble them. So, this should be a nice tight fit, so I quite like spinning it into it. But before we spin and place our stem into our bowl and our base, if we were going to glue this, then we would get our wood glue or our epoxy, which I would recommend, um, cover the whole thing, cover the inside, and then just set it in place. So it stops. And then for the base. And you make sure that it's even. You can see this one is a, a bit of a slant there. So what I'll do is I'll just spin it around until it sits all in line and flush. Um, and we do this before the glue sets. So just spend a bit of time while the, while the glue is drying and before it dries, just turning the different components until they line up um, in a straight position. And once it's all the glue's all dried, um, sorry, before I say that, once everything's aligned and in place, while the glue is still wet, you would have got some excess squeezing out here. Just tidy it up, mop it up with a bit of a rag or a, or a tissue. Then we let the glue dry, and then if we like, we can paint our goblet. Um, I use chalk paint or milk paint, same thing. Um, and then we can oil it. So. Um, if you're part of the Woodsman subscription, then you would have got some oil, probably, um, which is, uh, I like using Tretex um, hard wax oil. You could use Danish oil, linseed oil, if you want. Um, just anything to waterproof it, really. And that is you, ready to have your first drink. So, best of luck. Um, enjoy. And... Cheers me um, with your first drink, if I got you through this. Um, yeah, thanks.